One of their first sales prospects was the newly oil-rich Iran. We were going to take the Shah on a flight. And doing the flight, my job was to clinch the deal. Anyway, the Shah turned up, went off the plane, took his place uh, on the plane with me, and uh, I thought, well, this is fine, I've got 40 minutes to sort of do the deal, do the business. We hadn't got, you know, a few hundred feet off the ground before he said, I'd like to go on the flight deck, and he was gone. Uh, I don't blame him, it was a very fascinating place to be. But I was left without the ability to talk to the Shah. We landed. And I had about 200 yards between the bottom of the steps and the Royal Pavilion with this great red carpet. And the Shah was no slouch. He went fast, so I was walking alongside him. And I, I said, Your Majesty, will you buy the Hong Kong? He said, Yes, we'll have two. I thought it was fantastic. I said, Your Majesty, can we have over flying rights? He said, Yes, of course. The right to fly supersonic. Tehran International Airport, midway between London and Tokyo. Concorde was there to show her paces to Iranian officials, and in particular, the Shah. The Shah, an active man of 53, asked Concorde's pilot, Brian Trubshaw, about their flight together over his kingdom. With the Shah is Michael Heseltine, Britain's aerospace minister. The Concorde, all set for a sales pitch as she heads into the wind. A keen and able pilot himself, the Shah is anxious to find out all he can about this supersonic monarch of the skies. Slicing through the atmosphere at twice the speed of sound, the Shah at the controls. Everyone was very pleased with a one and a half hour flight. So pleased, in fact, that the Shah has indicated that his country will buy three of them. This order is a tremendous start to the Concorde's 40,000-mile world sales tour.